so God help me, law. My love to thee is sound, sans crap of law. Sans, sans, I pray you. But yet I have a trick of the old rage. I'll leave it by degrees. I'm sick, bear with me. Speak for yourself, my wit is at an end. Teach us, sweet madam, for our rude transgression some fair excuse. The fairest is confession. Were you not here but even now disguised? Madam, I was. And were you well advised? I was, fair madam. When you then were here, what did you whisper in your lady's ear? That more than all the world I did respect her. When she shall challenge this, you will reject her. Upon mine honor, no. Peace, do not vow. Your oath once broke. Here's none would trust you now. Despise me when I break this oath of mine. I will, and therefore keep it. Rosaline, what did the Russian whisper in your ear? Madam, he swore that he did hold me dear as precious eyesight, and did value me above this world, adding thereto, moreover, that he would wed me or else die my lover. God give thee joy of him. The noble lord most honorably doth uphold his word. How mean you, madam? By my life, my troth, I never swore this lady such an oath. By heaven you did, and to confirm it plain, you gave me this. But take it, sir, again. My faith in this the princess I did give. I knew her by this jewel on a sleeve. Pardon me, sir, this jewel that she wear, and Lord Barone, I thank him, is my dear. What? Will you have me or your pearl again? Uh, neither of either. I remit both twain. I see the trick on it. <sighs> oh, welcome, pure wit. Thou partest a fair fray. Oh, Lord, sir, they would know whether the three worthy shall come in or no. But what? Are they but three? No, sir, but it is very fine for everyone who presents three. For my own part, I am, as they say, but to perfect in one man, in one poor man, Pompion the Great, sir. Thou art one of the worthies. If please them to think me worthy of Pompey the Great, for my own part I know not the degree of a worthy, but I am to stand for them. Go, bid them prepare. Oh, we will turn it finally off, sir. We will take some care. Moreau, oh, and they will shame us. Let them not approach. We are shame-proof, my lord. And tis some policy to have one show worse than the kings and his company. I say they shall not come. Nay, my good lord, let me all rule you now. That sport best pleases, that doth least know how. Their form confounded makes most form in mirth, when great things laboring perish in their birth. A right description of our sport, my lord. Anointed, I implore so much expense of thy royal sweet breath as will utter a brace of words. Doth this man serve God? Why ask you? A speaks not like a man of God his making. That is all one. My fair, sweet, honey mama, for I protest the schoolmaster is exceeding fantastical. Too, too vain, too, too vain, but we will put it, as they say, to Fortuna de la Guerra. I wish you the peace of mind, most royal couplement. <laughs> Here is like to be a good presence of words. He presents Hector of Troy, the swain Pompey the Greek, the parish curate Alexander, Armando's page Hercules, the pedant Judas Maccabeus. The ship is under sail, and here she comes, a maid. <laughs> I, Poppy Am! You lie, you are not he. I, Poppy Am! With Lippet's head on me. <laughs> well said, old Parker. I, Poppy Am, surnamed the Big. The Great. <laughs> 
It is great, sir. Puffy surnamed the Great, that often filled with charge and shield, did make my foe to sweat. <laughs> and traveling along this coast, and traveling along this coast, and traveling along this coast, I am here, come by chance, to lay my arms before the legs of the sweet lass of France. <laughs> if your ladyship would say, thanks, Pompey, I had done. Great thanks, great Pompey. Oh, tis not so much worth, but I hope it was perfect. I made a little fault in great. My hat to a halfpenny. Pompey proves the best worthy. <laughs> Where in the world I live, I was the world's commander. By east, west, north, and south, I spread my conquering might. My scutcheon plain declared. <laughs> I am Alessandra. Your note says no, you are not, but it stands to right. The conqueror is dismayed. Proceed, good Alexander. When in the world I lived, I was the world's commander. The most true, tis right, you were, Sir Alexander. A oh, Pompey the Great, your servant and pastor. Take away the conqueror, take away Alexander. Oh, sir, you have overthrown Alexander the conqueror. A conqueror and a fear to speak. Run away for shame, Alexander! Prayer, and shall please you. A foolish, mild man, an honest man. He is a marvelous good neighbor and a very good bowler. But for Alexander, alas, you see how tis a little or parted. But there are worthies that come in that will speak their mind in some other sort. Stand aside, good company. by this sif, <laughs> whose club killed Cerberus, that three-headed Canis, and when he was a child, a babe, a shrimp, thus did he strangle a serpent in his manus. Ponium, he seemeth in minority, ergo I promise this apology. <laughs> Keep some state in thy exit and vanish. <laughs> <laughs> Iscariot, sir. Judas, I am eclipped. Maccabeus. Judas, Maccabeus. Clipped is plain Judas. <laughs> A kissing traitor. How art thou proved, Judas? Judas, I am. The more shame for you, Judas. What mean you, sir? <laughs> to make Judas hang himself. Well, begin, sir. You are my elder. Oh, well followed, for Judas was hanged on an elder. <laughs> I will not be put out of countenance. Because thou hast no face. What is this? And now forward, for we have put thee in countenance. But you have put me out of countenance. The false, we have given thee faces. But you have outfaced them all. And thou wert a lion, we would do so. Therefore, as he is an ass, let him go, and so it is, sweet Jude. <laughs> Nay, why dost thou stay? For the latter end of his name. For the ass to the Jude. Give it to him. Jude, ass away! <laughs> <laughs> this is not generous. Not generous. Not hungry. Alas, poor Machabeus, how he hath been baited. Why thy head, Achilles, here comes Hector in arms. What is this, Hector? Oh, this cannot be Hector. <laughs> He's a god or a painter, for he makes faces. <laughs> the omnipotent Mars of Lances the Almighty gave Hector a gift. A gilt nut man. A lemon. <laughs> Stop with cloves. No, cloven. <laughs> Peace. The omnipotent Mars of Lances the Almighty gave Hector a gift 
the heir of Ilion, a man so breathed <gasps> that certain he would fight. <laughs> Yea, from morn till night, out of his pavilion. <laughs> I am that flower. That, that mint. That columbine. Sweet Lord Robert, rain thy tongue. I must rather give it the rain, for it runs against Hector. Aye, and Hector's a greyhound. <laughs> <laughs> the sweet woman is dead and shot. Sweet chucks beat not the bones of the buried. When he breathed, he was a man. But I will forward with my device. Bestow on me the sense of hearing, sweet royalty. Speak, brave Hector. We are much delighted. I do adore thy sweet grace's slipper. <laughs> Loves her by the foot. He may not in the yard. <laughs> this Hector far surmounted Hannibal. The party is gone. Fellow Hector, she is gone. She is two months on her way. What meanest thou? Faith, unless you play the honest Trojan, the poor wench is cast away. The child brags in her belly already. Tis yours. <gasps> Dost thou infamize me among potentates? Thou shalt die! Then shall Hector be ripped for Jack and Ezra that is quick by him, and hang for Pompey that is dead by him. <laughs> Most rare Pompey! Renown the Pompey! Great Pompey! Greater than great, great, great Pompey! Pompey the Huge! Hector Trumbo! Pompey is moved! Mori, Mori, scare them on! Scare them on! Hector will challenge him! Aye, if he have no more man's blood in his belly, then we'll suffer flee. By the North Pole, I do challenge thee. I will not fight with the pole like a northern man. I'll slash. I'll do it by the sword. I betray you. Let me borrow my arms again. Root for the incense worthy. I'll do it in my shirt. Most resolute Pompey. Master, let me take you by the no. no. Gentlemen and soldiers, pardon me. I will not combat in my shirt. You may not deny him. He hath made the challenge. By both men and will, sweet bloods. What reason have you for it? The naked truth of it is, I have no shirt. <laughs> <laughs> I go Woolwood for penance. But true, I'll be sworn. He will none but a dish clout of jack and nettles that he wears next his heart for a thief. <laughs> Oh, 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 oh,
three ships we took proved to be manned entirely by orphans. So we had to let them go. One would think that Great Britain's mercantile navy were recruited solely from her orphan asylums, which we know is not the case. But hang it all! You wouldn't have us absolutely merciless. <laughs> There's my difficulty. Until 12 o'clock I would. After 12 I wouldn't. How oh, was ever a man placed in so delicate a situation? And Ruth, your own Ruth, whom you love so well, and who has won her middle-aged way into your boyish heart. <laughs> what is to become of her? <laughs> he will take you with him. <laughs> well, Ruth, I, I have some little difficulty about you. It is true I admire you very much, but I have been constantly at sea since I was eight years old, and. Yours is the only woman's face I've seen during that time. I think it is a sweet face. It is! Oh, it is! <laughs> say, I think it is. That is my impression. But as I've never had the opportunity of comparing you with other women, it is just possible I may be mistaken. Oh. What a terrible thing it would be if I were to marry this innocent person and then find out that she is, on the whole, plain. <laughs> Just to take her from you. In justice to her, and in consideration for you, sir, I will leave her behind. Oh, no, 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 Frederick, this cannot be. Why, we are rough men who lead a rough life. <laughs> but we are not so utterly heartless as to deprive thee of thy love. I think I am right in saying that there is not one here who would deprive thee of thy inestimable treasure for all the world holds dear. No! Frederick, keep thy love. You're very good, I'm sure. Well, it's time of the time, Frederick, and we must be off. When your process of extermination begins, let our deaths be as swift and as painless as you can conveniently make them. I will. By the love I have for you, I swear it. Would that you could render this extermination unnecessary by accompanying me back to civilization. Ah, uh, no. No. I admit I don't think much of our profession, but well, contrasted with respectability, it is comparatively honest. <laughs> no, Frederick, no. For I shall live and die a pirate king. Oh.